Yep, cool. So, uh, <clears throat> hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our talk, and thank you for the introduction. And in this talk, we'll be talk talking about uh, how we explore insecure cryptocurrency wallet applications. Uh, so, my name is Pei Yu Wang. Uh, here's what with my colleague uh, Ming Ji He. Uh, we are security engineer at Thirty K. So, Thirty K is a blockchain security company. Uh, we provide a variety of security services such as smart contract audit, chain audit, and penetration testing. Um, I personally responsible for uh, internal security review for our own product, as well as the external pen test, focus on wallet, explore, exchange, and the app. So outside of client work, we also do security research on different uh, applications in the blockchain space. And that's how we come up with this talk. Uh, we also do uh, bug bounty huntings over the weekend when we have time. Uh, this is the first time we speak at DevCon Blockchain Village. Uh, thank you so much for having us here. So what is crypto wallet? I'm sure most people here know what crypto wallet is, but in case someone don't. So crypto wallet is a device, a program, or a service that stores the private key and the public, or, and the public key. So cryptocurrency is virtual. Like a wallet cannot physically hold the coins. And when you want to do the transactions, um, the wallet applications will use your private key to sign the transaction and broadcast that to the uh, blockchains. Uh, there are different forms of crypto wallets. It has software wallets and hardware wallets. In this talk, we'll be focused on web wallet and desktop wallets. Uh, we believe there's a two core functionality for crypto wallets. One is account management, allows user to uh, create account, import account, and the other one is make transactions. It's send the receive coins. Uh, and for certain and for wallet for certain protocols, it will have additional features, such as for Cosmos based wallet. Uh, they will provide the stacking features, allow users to delete coins to validators and claim rewards. And during out uh, looking at different wallets, we also find some uh, I don't know how to call them, maybe call it fancy features. Uh, for example, you can view newsletters in a desktop wallet. You can add certainly third party plugins in a desktop wallet. You can create a coin giveaway on Twitter in a web wallet. And there's a one desktop wallet, the backend server allow user to upload any type of files to the backend server with the API. And then there's a desktop wallet use the web view to implement a browser in it, which is, Mind blowing. I don't know why people will want to use their desktop wallet to be as a browser. Um, so we look at 45 different wallets and we kind of put them into two categories. One is host wallet. Host wallet is that the, um, the server manage your private keys. Uh, if, if you want to use the wallet, you need to uh, authenticate, log into the application, authenticate with the server, and the server return you like uh, session tokens or JWT tokens. Um, in either in those secret will either be stored in cookies or local session storage. And so most of what I would look at are decentralized wallets, which means the user manage the private key, the store, the key store, and the passwords. And those after user create an account or, gen, or import the account, those things will be stored in local or session storage or in the JavaScript variables. Um, so in the 45 wallets, uh, 27 of them are web wallets and 18 of them are desktop wallets. Uh, we think the logo for those uh, projects are really cool. So we collect them and put it here. So let's start with a web wallet. This is a typical uh, interface for a web wallet. Uh, this is our uh, 30, that deep wallet for 30 chain. Uh, in the interface, you can, you can check your uh, balance. It has the UI for uh, sending tokens. And this is because it's a Cosmo-based chain. It has the um, staking feature as well. So when we talk about web applications uh, security, uh, the thing come to my mind is OS top 10. Here's uh, some statistic on uh, OS top 10 in the 27 wallets we look at. Uh, we, we find cross-site scripting in three wallets. We will do a case study for two of them. Uh, we find one SQL ingestion in a decentralized wallet. So the database only contains the, the, those transaction data. And because the transaction data in blockchain is already public, and we don't have way to escalate that, that SQL ingestion to 
uh, say command code executions. So that SQL injection is, is kind of just useless for in this case. We find one uh, broken authorization and unauthorized user can mess around with other people's 2FA settings, but uh, there's no, we cannot use this vulnerability to compromise a uh, user account. A lot of web wallets uh, missing security headers, for example, CSP, the content security policy, uh, and X frame option headers, and make the wallet vulnerable to click jacking. Uh, we see a few wallets using, out, using outdated uh, JavaScript libraries or outdated uh, Nginx Apache hosting, uh, but we are not able to directly export them. Um, so we don't, we have not seen any wallets dealing with XML or find them doing any type of deserializations. Uh, for the login and the monitoring, we, uh, we just don't know. So jumping to the first case study. Um, so this is uh, DOM SSS in a decentralized web wallet. Uh, the wallet supports a uh, single protocols. It has all the basic functionalities for a wallet. Uh, doesn't really have any fancy thing there. So the vulnerable feature is the application saved the last locations uh, the user visit and it redirect the user to that page after user unlock his wallet with his password. In this URL, it will redirect to the user to the valid data page um, after user unlock his wallet. And here's the code implementations. Um, the object returned to equal to the parsing result of the window.location.search and that and the return to variable pass into the window.location.htrep. Uh, if you have some experience about web app testing and stuff, you might you might realize this might be, a, be able to might vulnerable to DOM SSS. And that is the case. So DOM SSS re requires source and sync. So source is the location where untrusted data, the user input is taken by the application and passed to the sync. So when user visit this URL, the window.location.search will return question mark, return to equal to slash validators. And the return to object will later becomes, will contain the streams uh, slash validators. And here's the sync. Sync is the place where untrust data coming from the source is actually uh, getting executed. So the sync here is the window location the href, and it taking the user input inside the return to. So when it's returned to slash validators, it go to slash validator page. But if it is a JavaScript, JavaScript column alert one, it's it's going to pop alert in the uh, in the browser. So we have the DOM SSS here, but um, how can we export this to causing uh, bigger damage? So, so this is a decentralized web wallet. The key store and the passwords um, are stored in the local storage after using creating account or import his account. So if you're not familiar with local storage or JavaScript, um, so, so JavaScript is able to read the content inside the local storage. In this example, uh, there's a, a key value pair, hello world store in local storage. JavaScript can just do local storage item hello, and we just get the uh, contents. All right, so now the, tech, the attack plan is to steal the key store and password in the local storage with the DOM SSS. And that's exactly what this payload does. It read the content of the local the key store and then password and send it to my uh, web server. And in my SS log, I can see uh, the key store contents and the passwords. And after I have those contents, I basically is just own the account. I can use those information, log into the wallet and transfer all the uh, money out. So for the fix here, the fix here is uh, after user log unlock his wallet, it just always redirect to the portfolio page. Uh, it just doesn't give the chance for uh, attacker to inject any uh, payloads here. So the second case study is a reflect SSS in a host web wallet. So it has host web wallet, the server manage all the, your private key. And to log into the applications, you will use your email and the one-time passcode you receive in the email. Uh, the wallet supports 16 different coins 
It has all the basic functionalities and the one additional feature called Twitter giveaway. Uh, this is the API handling. So the API format is like the uh, slash API slash endpoints. And the one to get user transaction is slash API users uh, slash cloud trends. And if you visit the non-existing endpoint, uh, for example, slash API slash test, uh, it will return the error message like this one. Uh, translate to English, it's fail to resolve the request test. So what we're seeing here is the content in the URL is reflect bad in the response. And this is kind of signal that indicating that this, uh, if the backend doesn't do any standardizations or encoding, that might have the uh, reflect cross scripting vulnerabilities. And that's the case, that's exactly the case. So by putting slash SVG onload equal to alert document domains, the application just very happily popped the uh, alert for me. And as I mentioned, this is a host web wallet. The uh, private key is owned by the server. Uh, you cannot just directly steal them uh, like the one in the first case study. So the thing, the plan here is to use these vulnerabilities to compromise, either take over user's account or take over his sessions. So by looking around, uh, I found that this the session token is stored in the um, PHP SCSSID cookies. And what's special here is it does not have the, that token does ha not have the HTTP only flag. So if you are not a web set guy or web developer, uh, HTTP only flag, if that has that flag set, it will stop JavaScript from accessing that cookies. In other way to say it is it prevents attacker to, from stealing the session tokens in the cookies with the cross site scripting attack. But in this case, in this case, there's no HTTP only. So I can just craft a payload that read the content, read the cookie content and send to my web servers. Uh, so after I get the session tokens, I can use the session token logging to the victim's account. So, you know, when you're going to compromise the wallet, the end goal will always try to steal the money. So, right, I take over the session, now it's time to take all the money. But wait, uh, I can't because for the money transactions, actions in that wallet, it requires a 2FA. So I keep looking around to see what I can do. Um, I, was, I was not able to reset the 2FA. I was not able to disable the 2FA. But I found a feature, there was, there's a feature called giveaway. How it work is you go into the interface, it asks you how many, uh, what kind of coin you want to give away and how many of them you want to give away and how many people you want to give it to. In this case, here in the screenshot, you can give away up to uh, two Bitcoin. I think that's uh, a lot. Um, and after you create a giveaway, what people will need to do is they need to follow you, tag three friends, retweet. Once you are done that, you can go to the URL and claim the rewards. And what's a special about this feature is this feature doesn't require 2FA. So I can use the reflect cross site scripting to steal user session tokens and use these features to uh, create a bunch of giveaway and claim those uh, rewards myself. And this way I can just transfer all the money coins out from the victim's account. So uh, on my, May 28, I report these issues to the company by email. They act uh, on these issues. Uh, and it, it was silence for like almost two months. And uh, last month they response, the issue is fixed and reward me uh, $20 uh, worth of coins. Um, they don't really have a formal background in programs. So uh, I'm fine with the $20. Um, so the fix is the HTML encode output. So no more cross site scripting. Uh, and they set HTTP only flag for the uh, session to for the cookies that contains the session tokens. In this way, if the application is uh, vulnerable to cross site scripting uh, later, uh, then the attacker would not able to directly steal the um, session tokens. So that's all about the case study on web wallet. Let's go move on to desktop wallet. So desktop wallet is the uh, desktop applications has it's the wallet that runs on Windows, Mac OS, and sometimes uh, Linux. So what kind of text that people use to build a desktop wallet? So we look at um, 18 desktop wallets. Uh, so one is Qt, C++, 
One is .NET C Sharp and one Java and 15 uh, electrons. Uh, in the next talk, what a case study, uh, we'll first, first talk about uh, server-side RCE in a .NET desktop wallet. And the second one is a client-side RCE in an electron wallet. Uh, now I'm going to mute myself and let my colleague Mingzhi walk you guys through the uh, server-side RCE in the uh, .NET desktop wallet. Um, thanks, Pei. So hi, everyone. I'm Mingzhi. So I'm going to talk about our remote code execution vulnerability found in a desktop wallet. So first, I'll uh, get some background about the wallet. The wallet is a decentralized single protocol wallet. It is written in C-sharp and it uses .NET framework. It contains many common wallet functionalities like account management, making transactions, and deploying interacting with smart contract. What's interesting is that it allows users to upload files to the server. This is not quite common in a wallet, so we decided to look into this feature more. As mentioned previously, this application uses .NET. So for a .NET application, it is very easy to retrieve the source code by decompiling the executables if code obfuscation is not deployed. So this is exactly the case of the wallet. So we are able to recover the source code for further analysis. So after decompiling the executables, we found the source code that implements the file upload, as shown in the following code snippet. The wallet sends an HTTP post request to the server and it returns with the file upload URL. So we saw file upload.php is the file that handles the file upload on, on the server side. So as a pen tester, this is very fascinating. As now we know that the server probably uses PHP as the backend. So if we could upload a PHP web shell to the server and open it in a browser, we might get remote code execution on the server. So that's exactly what we did. So we, uh, we are able to successfully upload the file using the wallet and access the uh, file up in the browser. So after clicking on the uploaded shell, we are able to gain a web shell on the server. We also discovered that the web server runs under the administrator user. So we are able to execute the command with administrator privilege. So at this point, we are able to gain full control of the server and we are able to manipulate files uploaded by other users. However, as mentioned previously, since it's a decentralized wallet, the server does not store any user private keys. So you are not, you cannot di directly compromise user account by exploiting this vulnerability. So the fix is actually pretty simple. The developer just removes the fail upload functionality in their further application so that they do not have to deal with it. This is actually a good idea as the crypto wallet is supposed to keep as simple as possible to avoid security issues. So now I will hand over to Pei Yu to talk about security in Electron Wallet. Um, yeah, thanks, Minji. So right now let's jump to Electrons. Uh, what is Electron and why Electrons? Electron is an open source framework that allows developers to build uh, cross-platform desktop applications with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Electron combines the uh, current render engine Node.js into a single runtime. So the benefit of using Electron is uh, developer, can, can, developer can reuse web application codes to build desktop applications. They don't need to have a separate, separate code base. They don't have, need to ha learn new languages. And debugging the uh, Electron application is uh, pretty easy with the Chrome uh, dev tools. And Electron application run on major OS. And because it can access to the uh, Node.js modules, it can build a more powerful app compared to the uh, uh, web app in the browsers. So Electron security. So for most vulnerabilities that exist in a web app, you can basically find them in the Electron app. And for Electron specific security issues, the uh, Electron official security guidance provides uh, very detailed information about uh, what mistakes that people make that will make the application vulnerable and how to not make those mistakes. And in Black Hat USA 2017, a talk called A Study of Electron Security uh, talk about some advanced technique that to bypass um, the building electron security protections to achieve uh, co-executions. But in this talk, we will be simply talk about one uh, configuration called node integration. So the definition for node integration is it refers to the ability of SSA Node.js resources in the applications. So why Electron application can 
although it's using uh, web technology, but can build more powerful app than uh, application running in the browser because it can import so many uh, Node.js modules. But, but it does come with a uh, greater security risk. So aside from the Electron official security doc is disabling Node.js integration help prevent uh, cross-site scripting from being escalated into a so-called remote code execution RCE attack. So what does it really mean? So this is the latest version of the My Crypto Desktop Wallet. Uh, in the configuration, it has the node integration set to false, uh, which it has the node.js disabled. And if you type require in the dev console, it will just say require is not defined. This is the early version of the My Crypto Wallet Desktop Wallet. Uh, it has the node integration set to choose and node.js enabled. In the dev console, if you type uh, require, it will show the require functions. So by copy pasting some malicious code into the dev consoles, uh, this behavior crosses out uh, cross -out scripting. And this is what you will see if you open the dev console when you're in the uh, electron in the desk Discord application. It says if if someone told you to copy paste something here, you have uh, it have other chance being scanned. And you should you shouldn't do that. So normally in a web application, if if uh, if victim export by the self SSS, uh, attacker can probably compromise his account or do some damage to his account within that application. However, for electron wallet, uh, it might ask it might get from self SSS to calculate it. So to open a dev console in electron application on macOS. It's option plus command plus i. And if you copy paste the, the following code uh, into the console, you can see a uh, calculator. So, what cal so if you don't uh, not familiar what calculator means, it's, uh, it's the way to show the successful of co-executions. So you see, I paste that um, into the console and the calculator pop up. All right. So what if the victim, so if you want to use way to export a victim, the victim, you will probably will construct some really long uh, weird things and ask the victim to paste into the dev console. And then the victim be like, hey, I'm not going to paste this weird thing into my dev console. So how about this one? Uh, paste this, it will allow you to claim one BDC. Uh, just p p paste window location the href equal to uh, HTTPS uh, BTC giveaway dot site. Uh, so by the way, that domain is available. It only costs point nine nine dollars on GoDaddy. Uh, yeah, so the victim is like, oh sure, it's uh, short uh, commands. I'm just going to paste in that console. What will happen? So what happen? You you're gonna see the calculators again because what is what the line is doing is it redirect you to another page. And if that page has the malicious code, it will just go to execute in the uh, in your desktop wallet in the electron applications. So here's a statistic on electron wallet uh, we look at. So we we look at 15 electron wallets that's in active development. Uh, so 11 out of 15 has Node.js enabled. This can either cause by they in the configuration file they set the node integration to choose or um, they use the Electron version less than 5.0. So the Electron uh, framework later than 5.0, it has Node.js disabled by default for security reasons. And five out of 15 has Node.js enabled and have the dev console enabled. So uh, it might just escalate self cross site scripting to client side core execution. So there's a one example that the, uh, the attacker can trigger the co-execution directly without using uh, self cross site scripting. And that brings us to uh, our last case study on client-side RCE on the Symbol desktop wallet. So the Symbol desktop wallet is an uh, open source decentralized single coin wallet. It's the uh, application firmware is new, it's Electron, it has all the functionalities, basic wallet functionality, and that's an addition future called View News. Uh, they have bug bounty programs on Hacker One. That's how I uh, discovered them and start hacking the wallet. 
So since it's open source, I start with uh, the code review. Um, this is their uh, the build.js is their um, electron configuration file. What the kid does is the process of platform is storing. Uh, it starts the application with the create Mac functions. Uh, otherwise, it create the start application with the create Windows functions. So and in the create Windows functions, I see that node integration is set to choose. That means if the application is running on Windows, uh, the node Node.js is enabled. So how can we I export this? So my goal will be to inject arbitrary JavaScript. Uh, self cursor scripting? Uh, no, but Boundary program does not pay for self cursor scripting. How about legitimate cursor scripting? No, uh, I was not able to find one. But how about load untrusted remote contents into the application? So, all right, let's view some news. So, in the simple desktop wallet, it provides the view news features. And when you click that link into in the uh, in the news. It actually redirect out the wallet and go to another website. In this case, it uh, it just open up GitHub on inside the desktop wallet. So the exploitation plan is I will host the web page uh, with malicious JavaScript. I will place that URL then point to my malicious page on GitHub. It can be a GitHub issues on their repo. You can uh, I can create a, a repo and put it in the readme. I can, or I can put it on my uh, GitHub profile, and then uh, visit that URL in the desktop application. Uh, this is a very easy, uh, simple proof of concept code. What it does is there's a button, and when the button is clicked, it triggers the uh, RC count uh, functions. What that function does, it just pop the uh, calculators. And here's a proof of concept video. So I opened up the uh, desktop wallet. Uh, I unlock wallet with my password. Uh, and I go ahead and verify the uh, version. It's a very early version. This is the version back in April, I think. And I click the uh, uh, link in the news. Uh, I'm now on GitHub. And uh, in this case, you might like you ask the victim to go to a certain GitHub page with a phishing attack. But for the demonstration, I just uh, go to my personal uh, GitHub account, and I have the URL hosted on my profile. And I click that. I go to the page that contains my POC, and I click the close uh, calculator just pop up. So in this example, the POC script requires user to click a button. But in reality, attacker can just um, execute those malicious code automatically. And of course, attacker can use JavaScript to steal the key store, steal the password, or can you know uh, use have like uh, create a reverse shell and control the victim's computers. So the timeline must submit this report on hacker one. The triage and give it uh, 2,500 bounties, and uh, they fixed in the next release. Uh, the simple team and the name team are really nice. I really appreciate they uh, allow me to uh, talk about this being public. So, and the fix was they set the node integration to false in the Vue.js file and update the new view news feature. Uh, so right now, if you click the uh, link uh, in the news, it will open up in the external browser instead of uh, inside the uh, desktop uh, wallet. So again, I want to uh, thank the team, and they really value the uh, security. They just, uh, yeah, really uh, fixed. Uh, so the takeaway here is uh, attacker can compromise the victim's wallet or even the computer.
Yeah, uh, if you any have any questions, comments, you can post it on the uh, text channel or email us after. Uh, you are welcome to follow us on our Twitter. Uh, this slide will be uh, posted on my Twitter account. And, and uh, you can, if you're interested, you can check out our uh, company blog post. There's a, a lot of interesting blog posts that we talk about some uh, hacks that happened recently or some uh, technical articles. Thanks. Yeah, if you have any questions, just drop in the uh, channel.